Hi, good morning, professors. So my name is Yu Yao, and today I'm going to go presenting my individual assignment for CV805. And my topic today is a traditional Chinese upbridge and its function as well as its structures. So my name is Yu Yao, and the metrics number is showing the slides, which I'll be sending the slides to respectively later. So let's go to the outcome sector first. So first we're going to go through the origins. So apparently we have a different series to illustrate and to explain the origins and the, the source of the Chinese art bridge. So apparently we have the Tianxin Chao theory, as well as we have the Tu Xu theory, and what's more, we have got the Tao Wan theory. So actually they're indicating the different source and what can be found from this theory, but actually we'll explain in the next slides. So we have the one of the earliest records of the art bridge in China, and it has, can be found under deep bridge structures in the Hua Xing Drive in the Eastern Han Dynasty which apparently is 80 years, 80, 80 years ago. And inside of these uh, structures and scriptures, we can see like there's a daily life of the current civilians, and also we can find that this a bridge actually they have been used as a transportation way to get across the river. So, and uh, also to give you a better understanding of the Chinese art bridge, we are going to details about the oldest existing bridge in China, which is named after the Zhaozhou Bridge. Uh, in the 595 and 606 AD, it was built in the Sui Dynasty, and you can find today in the Hebei province. Well, it is a magnificent and elegant structure, and appearance of the bridge itself, and also it is a highly stable. It can be preserved until the very first day to the present. So yes, now we are going to details about the structures. So basically, we have two categories of the structures. The first one goes to the multilateral architecture. And the second one goes to the curved structure. So for the multilateral structure group, we have the three age to five age, and then all the way goes up to seven age. So most of it is with the old number of the age and so on. So for the second group, we have categorized the further in the round act, segmental act, and also the pointed act, which I'm going to illustrate more in the following slides. So first, let's go to the multilateral bridge. Apparently, we have the three age here. It can be found in the Zhejiang province, which most of the upgrades can be found in the Zhejiang and Jiangsu province. And uh, one of the most is uh, the material which you can observe. The most of the cases is actually going to be a snow, because they are more likely to be preserved. And as what I have been stated, it's a three H. So why do we just call it three H? It's actually you can see there's three beams on the, underneath the bridge, which serves as the main beam supporting the, the whole structure of the, the bridge itself. And uh, just like what I've seen before, we have the five age. And next slide, we're going to show you the seven slides. But this one, um, it is actually the Yiwu and the Zhejiang province. So it was a building in the Southern Song Dynasty. And as for the second edge bridge, it is can be found in Zhejiang province as well. It was a building in the Qing Dynasty, and it was like uh, 500 years ago. And you can count it actually from the one to seven underneath the bridge itself. Well, it is a magnificent, right? So next we're going to the categories which we call it the curved categories. So we have the house row act, we have the pointed act, and what's more we have the open spandle act bridge and then we have an equilateral bridge, pointed act bridge. So why do we call it a curved bridge? Because you can see there's no way you could find all these beams or all this art underneath the bridge, but instead you can treat the bridge as a whole. It actually being stone by stone and build as a as a as a whole part which is going to be support the whole maximum load of the bridge. So, and also we have got the different structures of the arc with the axis shown. Well, you can see from some of them it is a right at the same level of the sea level at the to this point. But from this one and this one, it's actually above and below the sea level, average height. And it's also acceptable, which could give you the different maximum loading index. So next, as a supplementary document, I'm going to introduce the four most famous bridge in Chinese history. So we have got the Zhaozhou Bridge, the Luoyang Bridge, Lugo Bridge, and as well as the Luding Bridge. So I would like to conclude that most of them actually comes connected to the significant history in the Chinese, in the, on the Chinese history. And we have the single arc, the sea crossing, as well as the multi arc, and also we have got these specific categories, which is actual being recognized as an iron chain suspension bridge. So yes, here yeah, I'm going to summarize our slides. So we have got the, we have got the building structures and the materials. Most of them are actually building with a stone, and uh, it's in 
impact is hugely affected in the modern history and modern bridge structure. We can say most of it actually the, it is curved shaped and, uh, and it's maintained a quite a good balance between appearance and usability. So with this kind of structure, we can actually design a more, a more bridge with a maximum cap with a even higher maximum loading, which is going to be capable of. And also, all these bridges are going through the destruction and the renovation and also the construction. So from that, we can see and it can be proved by itself. It's a self explanatory It can hold and it can go through such uh, destruction and such renovation according to its solid and concrete structure. So that will be all for my presentation. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or to ask. Thanks.